Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Doing What Matters podcast. So I just want to remind you that we have a new podcast title that we are using. This is the same old podcast, the Real Life Process podcast, but we have retitled it the Doing What Matters podcast. And it's great to be back with you chatting about living life from a place of rest, not rush. And we actually have the perfect guest with us today for this transition in talking with people and conversations about choosing to live life a little bit differently uh, in this place of rest, not rush. So Robert and Kay Fukui, welcome to the podcast. Oh, excuse me. Take two. Robert and Kaylee Fakui, welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you here. You're so focused on trying to get my last name right. You forgot <laughs> name. I did. I yeah, and we are not editing this out because this is real. You and got the hard this is real part. life. This is real life. She baby. got the hard part right. Yeah. <laughs> well, story of my life. I get the hard things right and kind of miss the details. So it's classic of uh, doing what matters, right? So focusing on the hard was pronouncing their last name. So before we hit record, we're like, we're going to get this. We're going to get this. And I got that. And then Kay, my apologies. I left out your beautiful name of Kay Lee. So welcome to the podcast either way. It's great to have you guys here. Thank you, Teresa, for having us. Yeah, this is going to be fun, I'm sure. And we're so honored to be part of the relaunch. Yes, so exciting. Congratulations. And and this is how it goes. Like, we (laughs) just do real life here on the podcast. And I recently had the opportunity to be on their podcast. Why don't we give a shout out? What's the name of your podcast? Power Up Your Marriage and Business. Power Up Your Marriage and Business. So that'll give you an idea of where we're going in this conversation for those of you who are listening in. Remember, you can also watch this video on our YouTube channel, the Real Life Process YouTube channel, and you'll get to see the laughter that we just had over the fact that (laughs) we got the hard part right, kind of messed up the easy part. But before we dive too far in, just tell us a little bit about the work that you all do, and uh, we'll talk about how we connected and all of those things. But welcome in, and let's find out a little bit more about Robert and Kaylee. Well, as far as the work we do, sometimes I'm not sure. <laughs> are we business consultants? Are we business coaches? Are we marriage coaches? Are we marriage counselors? <laughs> are all of the above. That's a lot of choices. <laughs> yeah, I know. So sometimes, or am I, am I a pastor? <laughs> because I'm, a, I'm actually all of a, the things. And I was a pastor. <laughs> And so in one given session with a client, we could be wearing all those hats in Mm. in the session. So, you know, my background's in marketing and sales for Fortune 500 companies. And then six years ago, started our consulting business to help family, privately held family business. And one of the things Kelly and I observed, because she started wanting to work with me, which I didn't want her to help in the beginning, because I thought it wasn't going to be good for our marriage. We can get into that later. (laughs) But one of the things we noticed was our clients, our, these family business, they were working so hard that they didn't have a lot of good quality time with family, their, mm. their spouse, their family. And so kind of part of our background and going to counseling before we even got married, um, there's a lot of convergence of our experience, both from childhood to marriage, going to counseling before we got even engaged, um, to doing consulting work and all that stuff. It was kind of this convergence of everything, business acumen to marriage and family therapy <laughs> to, All of it to, to being kids of entrepreneurs that they didn't have, you know, as much quality time with us as kids. And so that's, that's kind of part of where we are. Yeah. We have a heart for small business to succeed with their marriage and their business. I'm a third generation entrepreneur and I see a lot of the struggles that the businesses had. And sometimes it's small little minute changes that you can make that can really affect the business and then that bleeds over into the family because you have more time if you're making more money you can hire people and stuff like that so you can spend more time with your family well you heard a lot just in what you all said there if you're listening in and so much we can explore we probably won't have time for it all we said the same thing when i was over on your podcast episode as well like there's just so much around this idea of living life intentionally Uh, choosing to do it from a place that internally feels restful 
and full and intentional rather than I'm running around, you know, with my hair on fire is what I often say. And so let's dive in. And I want to start with one of the greatest resources that you all have just created in the past year, and that is your book. So tell us a little bit about the title of the book. And you just started talking about like these, you know, couples that come in, they both got an entrepreneurial background. Why did you write the book? Um, what's the title and kind of what's some overarching themes that are in the book? And then we'll unpack some of those together. Yeah. So the title of the book is Tandem. Subtitle is The Married Entrepreneur's Guide for Greater Work-Life Balance. And interesting enough, the title came from, you know, we're both part of Mike Kim's mastermind group. So in our group, when I was in a hot seat before the book was about to get released, didn't have a, a title yet that we had really landed on. And so I, I really posed that to the group. That was my hot seat question. <laughs> and so the, the title came from that. Um, and, you know, just the word tandem and all the imagery that goes along with it. And the first time we rode a tandem bike was actually on our book tour with at Sean, I remember. Um, <laughs> at Sean Osborne's gave house. Us a party for yeah. our book. And uh, that was yeah. the first time we rode a tandem bike together. And I saw all the parallels between trying to ride a tandem bike well and doing life and, and business I can't believe together. you guys, he actually got on the bike with me because he was afraid to get on the bike because I've been wanting to do a tandem bike for years and at the beach because we live in California, beautiful weather, get on a bike. And he's like, no, honey, I don't know what to do with you. I can't put you in the front. Could you probably run over some rollerblader because I'll be checking out the dolphins and the whales. And he's afraid to put me in the back because he thinks I won't pedal. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Dragging you along, Kaylee. Yes. Exactly. Dragging you along. So I love the imagery. I think it is brilliant marketing for one thing and just such a memorable uh, imagery and such a needed book. Uh, so dive in with me a little bit, if you would, to um, because my husband is also an entrepreneur and we've had conversation because Kaylee has some farming connection and my husband's a farmer and a lot of people are like, oh, that's not really an entrepreneur. Absolutely. What? Are you is. kidding me? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. it is. Oh my so gosh. even though we're not working in the exact same business, we both are in entrepreneurial businesses and we often consult back and forth and talk about each other's businesses and those types of things. But as you think about couples, what drove you to say there needs to be more information out there, more resources out there? We need a book that we want to put together on this topic. What were the things that you were seeing as themes with entrepreneurial couples? Because there's more and more of them than there ever used to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in the time that we're living in right now. Yeah, I think as I alluded to earlier, it really started both from childhood. Um, so even though my dad was not the typical entrepreneur, he was a pastor, but running a church and running a business is, as you know, so pretty much similar. the same. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, when it comes to the work-life balance or imbalance, I think sometimes people in ministry suffer a worst case of imbalance because their heart and soul is in the mission, in, in the church, in God's work. And so they're available 24 seven to the congregation and to their you know, congregants. And a lot of times because of that, the family takes a back seat, right? Mm -hmm. Any quote unquote emergency they're going to, the pastor is going to tend to. And what my emergency of just wanting them to come to my basketball game, that's, that's going to take a back seat. Right? right. And so just experience that from childhood. And then when we launched our consulting business, like I said, we started helping from the very beginning privately held small family business and just seeing their dynamic of working really, really hard and coming from my corporate background, I think that's, you know, where I think the, the benefit of coming from the corporate experience was even though it wasn't perfect, but there was a lot more efficiencies and knowing how to be more productive with the resources that you have, instead of putting more time in, it's about how do we be more productive? That was always the conversation every year when we go into business planning in Fortune 500, in small family business, it's whenever things aren't running as well, when the when the sales aren't there and the profits not there, it's about how do we put in more time? How do we get more sales? How do we get more and more and more? How do we put more in? And so you build on one inefficiency after another. Next thing you know, the business owner is now a slave to the business. Yeah, 
For sure. And I would say too, then it gets the whole balance off because we have no boundaries because as business owners, we're afraid to say no. Oh my gosh, another job might not come. Oh, I better take that even though it might not be a fit at all. And then something great comes by your dream job and you're not able to take it because you've already committed to something that you didn't want to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then you come home upset and then it affects the family. And as a family member, you know, spouses, or if you bring children into your family or whatever, it's, there's not a lot of choices as to who's doing what seats on the bus, right? It's just, we're mm -hmm. all in and everybody's doing it. I want to go back to something you said, Robert, because as a former pastor as well, we do see that similarity, right? And I think for both entrepreneurs, ministry world, what can also get off balance is one spouse then ends up picking up the family dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, many times if it's, uh, you know, the, the husband who's the pastor or the entrepreneur, then the wife is picking up all of the children responsibilities, going to all the ball games, doing all the things, making sure the family is running as well as possible. Uh, it could be the opposite as well. If the you know, wife is the entrepreneur. And then uh, I was just actually ran across a guy today who's a really good friend of mine. And he is, his wife works full time and uh, as a funeral home director. And so she is on call, you know, 24 hours a day, all of that. He's a freelance photographer, entrepreneur. So the kids were with him today because they're out of school. It's summertime. And so he very much has that different role and they love it and it works for them. But sometimes it gets off balance talking about the tandem bike. And, you know, so what have you all found? What do you share about and write about in your book? Let's talk about communication first of all, in those situations. Oh, that got a reaction when I said <laughs> communication. It's like, oh, you're going to go there. Yes. Let's go there. Where do you all, and what have you found works for couples to have those conversations? And then maybe some practical how-to in those places. Well, I say we start with, we have our weekly meetings, Monday at 3.30, mm -hmm where we talk about a lot of these things. Cause sometimes, you know, the, the moment might not be, I'm busy, I can't talk about that right now, or I'm stressed. You're in the middle of a heated discussion. So we have these planned you meetings. You have so heated discussions? <laughs> no, it's only when we're in the sunshine. That's all. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I see. <laughs> Listening. Okay. So we clean As our, our pastor, Our pastor calls it, um, Intense fellowship. Yes. <laughs> Intense fellowship. There you go. Uh, I always tell my husband, we can't resolve it without conflict because, you know, conflict does create the conflict resolution. That's how we come to you. But so weekly meeting, I remember us talking about that when I was on your podcast. Um, let me ask, I love the set aside time, same time, 3.30. Uh, what day of the week did you say you guys do that? Monday. Mondays at 3.30. How do each of you prepare individually to come to that weekly meeting? What's the prep work that you all do to come to that meeting? Oh, prep work. <laughs> 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 so first we put their weekly agenda is on a Google Doc. And so whenever something comes to mind that maybe we don't need to discuss during the day or sometime during the previous week, um, we put it either one of us can just go right on there and just Love pop it, it on the agenda. Share document. And we have a, yeah, mm -hmm. we, have a set, we have a set format. We start with praising each other because number one, I'm bad at it. <laughs> and so making sure that's how we intentionally start. Otherwise we go into tactics and what do you got to do? And you're honey? all there when it's tactic this? time, right? You're that like, I'm all, all week to think about a word of encouragement for me, Teresa. No, doesn't always that's happen awesome. Once a week, I love but... it. I love it. <laughs> Um, so, but, you know, but even though I, I've, I've even shared that, with, we share that with all our clients, you know, whether it's as husband and wife, or we got one of our clients, their three brothers working in the business, you know, your meetings, whether it's relational related or even business meetings, start with encouragement to you, mm -hmm. your team, mm -hmm. and then go into maybe a little bit personal agenda and then whatever the business agenda is, and then bookend it with what do you need? What kind of support do you need? How can I help? Mm. 
right? Because otherwise all these meetings, whether it's personal between husband and wife or business, traditional business meetings, it's all tactical. It's all about, this is what you got to do. And we don't praise each other enough, mm -hmm. especially right. in the business environment. We do not. Right? And especially if you're wired a certain way, like I am, I'm very most for focus on a task. So, you know, that's going to be low on the totem pole. <laughs> so, yeah. so we got to, I've got to intentionally put that on the top and then on the bottom of, of the meetings. And that, that's kind of basic format. That's that emotional uh, intelligence piece. We want to bring our whole self, right? So Robert and I immediately go to tactics. Um, and I can forget to ask my team or my husband, like, so how was your day? Uh, you know, I immediately go to the list, right, of here's what we haven't got done, here's what we need to do, all of those things, because that's how my brain works. So I have to remember to connect with my heart, um, you know, and, and be in that space, even though it doesn't feel natural to me. So I think that's so important, whether in any type of family business, but especially between couples. And I love your intentionality to say we have a weekly meeting and we come prepared. So Kaylee, how do you prepare for that? In in who runs the agenda? Who who runs the meeting? I don't know if we really have anybody that runs it because we just have everything on the Google Doc. So we just put down like what one of the things I really like is we talk about our calendar for the week. So we check in what's going on. Is there something that I'm included? Is there something that you need to know? How busy is Robert going to be? Is it going to be super crazy busy for the next two weeks? Then we need to schedule in some fun time somewhere when it's not as crazy. So I know what the expectations are because I can, I'm fine with it as long as I know in advance what's going on. It's like, you know, if he's busy for a whole month and I don't know it, I'm like, oh my gosh, you don't have time for me anymore. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah. But when you have something planned and Robert's good about that, and we'll even talk about date night, we'll get that on the calendar. Cause in our house, frankly, if it's not on the calendar, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And so important that communication, especially in business. So you're hearing a lot of things as you're, we're listening in about this is normal in any marriage, <laughs> what you're talking about, but then the intentionality to say, if we're going to work together, we want to love the work that we do. <laughs> and if you, Kaylee, are resentful of, gosh, all we do is work, because we heard you say you want to have some fun. Um, mm -hmm. So let's let's tag off of that, because I'd love to hear then, how do you all, we talked a little bit about communication, the weekly meeting, how do you disconnect from work and go have fun and go just, you know, enjoy each other's company, go on a date night without work being a part of the conversation? Or is it? Is that reality? So we got to hold each other accountable on that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> because you can't blame one or the other. One, one of us is going to slip every now, now and then. And we just have little, you know, give each other a look or I'll say, honey, do you want to really talk about that right now? Or can we hold off till Monday or the next business day, whatever? Um, so yeah, we do have the rule is no business talk off hours, but eventually if somebody, one of us slips that we just have to hold each other accountable. And, but that's also why, you know, those weekly meetings help, but even daily too, there's that daily, um, you know, we started, we start every morning with prayer for each other. And then it's that quick, you know, what's going, you know, if we haven't <clears throat> quick check in for the day and it's usually not doesn't take very long, but just a quick checkup, right? And then kind of towards the end of the day. So usually we're always able to kind of start and book end the day. We're just wrapping up the business stuff. So that way off hours, we can just concentrate on each other. But like I said, you know, we hold each other accountable because we know that's a rule. We don't talk about business off hours unless it's a true, true, true emergency, which, you know, it rarely is. And so um, we're able to do it because we do, we both recognize that we have to, you know, disconnect from work. And sometimes it's easier, let's be honest, than other times. Uh, we have a friend of ours, they have these conversation cards and sometimes we'll get those out at dinner or if we go out even, and I'll just bring those out and we ask each other questions to kind of get to know each other because sometimes it's easy just to get into work mode and that's all you talk about. Mm, so true. And 
Yeah, I'm just, there's so many thoughts going in my head because, again, as I said, my husband is also an entrepreneur, a business owner. My daughter works on my team, so we don't know any other way to live. And then she also works for my husband on the farm. So we don't know any other way to live than to all be intertwined. Um, and so I'm so relating to what you're saying. One of the things when my daughter came back to work for me that we did um, is we have two different communication methods. So if we're communicating over work, then it's over Voxer because that's what our team uses to communicate. But if I'm communicating with her personally over something, you know, that's personal or family related or whatever, then I text her or call her. So it keeps the boundaries. So you might even be able, if you're working in a family business or something like what are the boundaries that you can put on even how you do things? Which leads me to the question, Kaylee, when you, Robert was talking about off hours, I was almost laughing to myself. I'm like, is there such a thing? Because I often feel like I go home and all I do when I go home is pick up the farming business because now uh, my husband wants to talk about all of that and download all of that information. It's like, I need to catch you up on everything that it's we like we own two businesses together, right? Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so I'm curious it, for my own personal self, and I'm going to speak for our listeners who can't ask the question. How did you decide what is off hours? Is that something you talk about in your weekly meetings in your daily time together in the beginning of the day? Like, hey, we're going to be done by this time. Can you say a little bit more about off hours? I think sometimes I have to be intentional about it myself. Like we went to Utah skiing and I told myself, okay, I do not want to be doing work stuff. I do not want to be on social media. And that was, and I didn't want to bring it up to Robert because if I started bringing up work stuff, then we're going to talk about work stuff. So I thought I got to take responsibility. Cause he's here. all in cause he's about the tactics. So. <laughs> I'm kind of assuming that that's, you know, harder for you to do, Robert, than it is for Kaylee. Sometimes, yeah. It depends. Yeah. Well, you never, it's, it's, it's circumstantial because mm -hmm. sometimes once, it is, sometimes it isn't. Once my mind gets going business, it's hard for me to stop. And so I'm like, okay, I got to be really intentional about not getting started. So I, on when we were on the vacation I was saying, I just had to be really intentional about like I'm sitting there in the living room thinking, oh my gosh, I'm kind of bored because I'm not getting on social media. I'm not on my computer. I'm like, I have my book right here. I can pick up my book. So I thought there's other things that I can do with my time that's productive and learning new things mm -hmm. besides always thinking about work. And it made the vacation so much better because I was able to unwind sooner as opposed to all week thinking, oh my gosh, I need to check those emails. What if somebody Facebooked me? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, what about this client? And I just can't shut it off. So, And then to kind of answer your specific scenario, Teresa, because this is somewhat common. We have clients like this where they have two separate businesses or one has their own career and then the, the, the spouse has the business. And then you come home together and then you want to start talking about the day, which usually is about your profession. And so, and then usually one now one wants to spew it all out and the other one wants to, Hey, I just got home. <laughs> yes. And so we just talk about, okay, you guys got to establish when do you start to talk about these things? Mm -hmm. Because I know, yeah, you want to unload. Right. But like the person that's coming home, for instance, might need to decompress from work. And the first thing they don't want to do is talk about more business stuff when they walk in the door. So don't feel, otherwise they'll feel ambushed and then just fatigued. And then you get really, you know, irritated. So establish when, you know, do you need like a little buffer by the time you come home? Do you need a half hour, hour or whatever to decompress and then say, okay, let's give you, you know, half hour or whatever before dinner or after dinner or something like that. You know, kind of give it a space to talk about it mm -hmm. because otherwise the other spouse that needs to talk about it, they've, they, they, they need to talk about it, right? They're like a caged right. dog. And, and I think the difference, you know, this goes into personalities and all kinds of places we <laughs> mm -hmm. can go down the rabbit trail with, but it is that thing of recognizing, um, you know, one person needs to download. Well, sometimes by the time they've downloaded, uh, not that this would be our scenario, but yes, this is our <laughs> scenario. By the time they've downloaded, I have a lot of things I would have liked to have said too, 
but by then, like, it feels that it doesn't matter or is not as important or that that person doesn't care about what I want to say. So there's so many things that are going on in this piece. One thing Dale and I have tried, my husband's name is Dale, for those of you listeners who don't know or are newer to the podcast. He's been talked about a lot, so most people know, but <laughs> um, poor guy. But one of the things Dale and I have worked on so that we both get kind of equal time, if that makes sense, is what is the most important thing that you want to share with me about your day? Mm. Because when I can narrow it down to that, instead of going, how was your day? You know, that's the typical scenario, right? Like, oh, here we are eating dinner. How was your day? You know, we do it to our kids. We do it to our spouse. That's such a like, do you really want to know or are you giving the pat answer? So if you can turn the question into something that you clarify as in, you know, what's the most important thing you'd like for me to know? Because then I can tell the most important thing. Uh, today it would be, I had this amazing podcast with these guests that are just going to be awesome and I love them and, you know, all of that. But, you know, that's what I would want to tell them. I had a great interview today and we had so much fun. I could have shared with him five other things, but when I narrow it down to what's the most important, that feels mm -hmm. way more loving uh, for both mm -hmm. of us and not as much pressure to go, wow, does he want to know my whole day? Um <laughs> Spin you know, because <laughs> that's a lot, right? And yeah, yeah. so I just wonder, so that leads to something else I wanted to talk about, if we could, is another C word called conflict. <laughs> uh, so we've talked about communication a little bit. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you all even talk about it in the book or whatever about conflict resolution and bringing things to the table as to people working in business together. Yeah, you know, I mean, conflict, as you kind of alluded to earlier, is healthy because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's inevitable. You're going to have two people. Yes, we have some sh shared values and views, but there's a lot of some differences in how we view things. And that's actually helpful. To, I mean, just like from just a pure business standpoint, you don't want to surround yourself with people that think just like you because then there's no innovation, no creativity, there's really no forward movement in the business. So you gotta welcome those different viewpoints because, you know, number one, we all have blind spots and our spouse covers that up because they see your blind spots, right? right. We see each other's blind spots, so we can cover it up. And then, but then sometimes it creates conflict. And so we just gotta know how to be able to talk about these differences, right? And so the first thing that is just it, just very foundational for any couple or for any type of communication with any, within teams is establishing rules of engagement of how you do conflict. Mm -hmm. We go, what's out of bounds, what's in bounds? What do you not do or say in a disagreement? And what do you do or say, right? Like, for example, whenever conflict gets heated, it's because we're kind of, we're basically triggering each other. What I say to Kaylee makes her upset or gets defensive because it just triggers some kind of emotion that may not make sense to me, but it makes sense to her because there's something deep rooted from usually childhood, right? Mm -hmm. And so we just trigger each other. And so when she gets defensive, that triggers me. That response triggers me. And so we just go back and forth. It's that cycle of insanity, we call it. <laughs> and yeah, so it is the crazy the cycle. <laughs> yeah. And so everybody's saying the same thing, maybe louder and slower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never do that. What are you talking which, about? Which is even, isn't it interesting though? Even the body language, like we're laughing about like louder and slower, you know, that can even trigger us. Like, well, I'm yeah. not a hundred Because we know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You're not doing. my dad or you're not my, now you're talking to me like I'm your kid. You know, I mean, it's the whole, all the words come out uh, yeah. when we go there. I don't know, maybe for you as listeners, you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. But I bet you do. Um, and I always want to be authentic to say, this is real life, right? Like, even though y'all have wrote a book about it and you've done all the thing, this is real life. And we can get better at it, um, but we're human beings and we're flawed. And, you know, by God's grace, we continue to show up and love in. So you have boundaries around. So talk a little bit more about that. Maybe Kaylee share. What's rules of engagement 
Um, so what it looks like for us is this comes from my own childhood wounds is in my family, we didn't do conflict. It looked like we just storm out of the driveway mad in our car, hang up the phone, we walk out on each other. And so when we were first married, I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, if Robert gets mad and walks out the door, I don't know if he's going to come back. He might just leave me. Mm -hmm. So for us, it looks like we're having an intense conversation. So we could say, honey, I love you. I'm upset right now. I need to take a time out. I need a break for say an hour and then we'll come back. And so he'll come back in an hour because if you, whatever time you say, you need to commit and, and, um, uh, honor right. that. Mm -hmm. and then we come back. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, he still loves me. He's coming back. I don't have to like get all cray cray thinking, oh my gosh, he just left me. And then when he come back, we can either try and talk about it again or put on the, you know, decide another time where, where we'd be able to have the, continue the conversation. And if we decide to do it at another time, we'll give each other a date and a time so that we know we don't leave anybody hanging because it's easy to say, oh yeah, we'll come back to that. And then you just think. We'll just put Push it under the, the conference Hopefully or get they'll forget again. about it. <laughs> yeah. Robert, other thoughts that you have there on the rules of engagement piece? Yeah. You know, so for my childhood, you know, you notice the theme here, right? It's really recognizing where the triggers come from. And so for me, you know, my dad didn't offer a lot of praise. So hence the connection, right? Why, why I don't do encouragement well. And so usually when he talked to me, it was in some form of correction. And so when Kaylee comes to me with something, regardless of her intent or her heart, I'm going to view it as some kind of criticism. And so what we established was, and it goes both ways, is when we're coming to each other with an issue that let's preface it in some form, like she'll say, what she says to me is guard, guard your heart. It's a warning sign that I'm going to say something that could hurt, it could sting, but it's not meant as criticism or it's, 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 it's with the right heart. And so when she says that, guard your heart, I go, <sighs> take a deep breath. Yeah, you <laughs> know, it's myself. still going to be hard because that's <laughs> yeah. in your DNA, right? Oh. Um, but it gives, I love that. Can I just say like, cha-ching, <clears throat> if I had a little bell, I'd be dinging it right now of like, that's a takeaway. So everybody, if you need to rewind the episode, rewind, do the 15 second rewind because that right there of having a trigger phrase that sets mm -hmm. up you to go, okay, take a breath. Um, don't react, you know, don't react, don't react. Don't react, <laughs> don't take it as criticism. And depending right. on your personality, and my listeners know I work a lot with personality. I look, work a lot with childhood wounds. We all have a story. That story has formed and shaped us into who we are on this present day and this present moment. But just that breath to say, guard your heart, like that feels loving. And you all have set up that. So thank you for that. That is huge to just say, how can I frame this differently? Um, yeah. So thank you well, for that. That's a great way. I don't want to catch, we don't want to catch each other off guard because then you get defensive and your claws are out and you're like ready to <laughs> draw blood, you know? Yeah. No, and that we also is so ask good. We also ask permission to talk about certain things is now the right time because uh -huh. a lot of times you just barge in and well, I got to, I got to load and your spouse is in the middle of something and it's probably not the right time to right. just barge in with some issue. Right. So, right. Hey, honey, I need to talk about something. When can we talk about this? You know, this may lead us down a rabbit trail. We don't want to go down and we could do another <laughs> whole episode on, but I have to ask because, um, probably there's someone out there thinking the same thing. Um, as people that work together in business, there are things that are kind of come up that are conflicting around the business. And there are things that come up that are conflicting just because you're married and you're doing <laughs> everyday life. Um, is there any system or process? Cause you know, I love those that you <laughs> come up with. It says this goes on the weekly agenda. Hey, let's put that there. Cause that's really more of a business thing. And then other things are, is, have you all 
have y'all figured out that magic formula? Because if you have, we all want to know. <laughs> I mean, in general, you know, like I said, the weekly meetings are those non-urgent things, the thing that doesn't have to be done today, mm -hmm. right? But does need to be discussed. And so, you know, when it comes to the everyday stuff, I mean, there are most of the conversations that we have on a daily basis are usually about, you know, I need an answer for this, or, you know, have you done this yet or whatever, you know, those are the daily stuff, but the more pre-planned, proactive, forward-looking stuff is, is just on the, on our weekly agenda. So in general, I think we're pretty good about that because, you know, again, because we have a space for those other things, those forward thinking, forward thinking things, it doesn't creep into the daily conversation, doesn't mm -hmm. clutter the daily conversations. And so I think that weekly agenda thing really helps kind of start to separate what's in urgent to be talked about at the moment versus what just need to, we can just wait for a week or a few days. Does that make sense? Well, one of the themes I hear from the communication that we've talked about from, you know, working together in general, and then also from conflict is intentionality of yeah. you all being very intentional to say, uh, even in the little bit of time management that we've talked about, and I know time, time management is something you all work with couples on as well and with business owners as I do, but um, I think that piece of we're going to be intentional, that's what I'm walking away with today. This was not my own private therapy session, although it kind of <laughs> felt like it, or coaching session, or whatever you want to call it, because I just had several ahas in how I want to do this better uh, with my husband and just in our working together and owning two businesses and doing all of the things, but the intentionality to say, um, you know, one of the blocks I talk about is people blocks to say, we're going to have a block of time that's set aside that we're going to talk about our business and our weekly agenda. That's going to help with some of that conflict. We're also going to have purposeful time together every day at the beginning of the day to pray uh, for one another, to pray about our business, to move into the day with some intentionality. And and then we're intentional about the off hours as compared to the work hours and what happens in those times and, and the rules of engagement. So lots and lots of intentionality is what I'm hearing. So this yeah. is why you need the book. Uh, so <laughs> I want to encourage you. I've got one more question that I want to ask them that I'm doing now in, as we've revamped the podcast into doing what matters. But before I get to that final question, I would love for you to share with our audience, where can they get in touch with you? Because we have lots of listeners who this is gonna resonate with. So where would you recommend they go to get in touch with all of you? Uh, one of the simple places to go is just to our website, marriedentrepreneur.co. And so that's where you can, there's also a free download for, you know, st establishing greater work-life balance. You can, there's a link also to our book, Tandem, The Married Entrepreneur's Guide for Greater Work-Life Balance, and of course, our podcast, Power Up Your Marriage and Business. And then if you want to follow us on social, on Instagram or Facebook, there's Power Couples by Design. You can find us there. All the places. So find a space and a place that you can follow along with Robert and Kaylee. But before I let you go, uh, we'll have all that in the show notes too. So all those links and all of those things that he just talked about. But before I let you go, this is the question I'm starting to ask all my guests. As we talk about doing what matters, living from rest, not rush, give us one practical way this week that you've chosen to live from a place of rest, not rush. What did that look like for the two of you? Well, one thing is carving out space, right? We're talking about having, you know, separating business from personal time. And so yesterday we got a text from our real estate agent um, inviting us to a Dodger game tonight. <laughs> and so, you know, it's kind of last minute and we're like, well, we can do that <laughs> because one, we want to make sure, you know, our off hours is off hours and we tend to block, you know, unless it's a true work business emergency, we don't usually work past six o'clock. Mm. And we don't in general. And so we're able to keep those evenings free for us. And then when these things come up like this, we can say yes. <laughs> and Kaylee, what does that feel like for you to be able to say yes? 
Oh, I'm all excited because it's nice to have some margin in your calendar where you're able to do something spontaneous at the last minute. And I just thought it was so generous for them to invite us. And so we're excited. Okay. I just have to say, we did not set up the end of this episode, but what you just said is exactly where I want to go. And I say it all the time that moments, extraordinary moments are made in the margins. Mm -hmm. What you just said, they're made in the margins and the margins come when we make space and time intentionally uh, for what matters in our life. So that was not pre-planned that she goes, we have the margin (laughs) to do this. It's just how aligned uh, your work and my work are together. It's why I love talking with you guys. I'm going to definitely have to have you back because we did not even scratch the surface of what we could have (laughs) uh, dove into uh, around this podcast. So thank you so much for doing what matters and doing the work that only you by God's design can bring to the world because it is so important. And so thank you for being here with me today. Thank you, Teresa. This uh, yeah, has been thanks, great. Thanks, Teresa. And what we an honor. definitely, you know, this is just so synergistic because we love the work you do, obviously, when we connected in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And your book is amazing. We've we've recommended to friends, too, <laughs> because you go deeper in some of the things that we talk about, but we don't go as in-depth. So yeah. it's great to have other resources that we can pull on. And for, especially for people that are just kind of like minds, it's just easy to recommend It's so easy, isn't it, to go back and forth. So thank you all. Listeners, remember that every ordinary day has an extraordinary moment. You just have to look for them. And we'll be back next week with the new Doing What Matters podcast. We'll see you all then.